so let's continue developing our point of sale. In the second part, we're going to see how any framework deals with relational data. This is a slightly more advanced topic and it does require that you have a basic understanding of how relational databases work. But if that's not the case, don't worry, we're going to provide resources for each concept that we touch in this tutorial. You can find all the links in the video description below. But before we jump into this topic, we have some housekeeping to do. We want to keep the program.cs as the starting point of the application. So we will move all the code currently in the class into different classes. So let's right click on our project and create a new class. And that's going to be called enums. And after tidying things up, let's copy the enum menu options into the enums class. We will also create the main menu method in the user interface class. And that's also going to be static and internal. And we will copy the main menu code from the program.cs into that method. And back into the enums class, we need to add the access modifier internal. Otherwise, by default, it's private and it can't be seen by other parts of the application. Back in program.cs, let's remove the main menu and we will just call the main menu method from the user interface class. And we don't need an instance of that class since that method is static. And that's it. The code is a little bit more organized now and the program.cs is just the starting point of the app as we intended. Now let's continue working with Entity Framework and we're going to create a new folder which will contain the models for the database tables. So we will move the product model into that folder and in these models we need to provide additional information about the database schema so any additional configuration that we want for these tables and we do that using data annotations and that's not the only way to do it we can also use fluent api to configure the schema of the database and it's good that we learn both ways but we're going to keep it simple for now since data annotations can be used to configure everything we need for a simple application now to deal with advanced scenarios such as complex relationships Fluent API is a better choice since it provides a more extensive set of configurations. So the first data annotation that we're going to use is to create an index. And an index in relational data is a data structure that improves the speed of search. So we can use index columns to retrieve data efficiently. And in our case, we want the name property to be indexed and we want it to be unique. Hence the is unique boolean being true. And we are passing this name of operator instead of hard coding the string name. And I've been using this name of keyword more often because it helps us prevent bugs that can happen when we make a change and forget to update the correspondent data. And we are making this name unique because we don't want to have products with duplicate names. And I'm changing the name of the ID to product ID just for readability. That's not absolutely necessary, but I'd rather make the code a little bit more verbose and easier to read. Now, the next data annotation that we're going to use is the key. And that ensures that the product ID is the primary key for this table. Primary keys are a very important concept in relational data since that they are indexed and they are unique and these are crucial elements for data integrity which is what we want to achieve with relational data now entity framework is able to detect a primary key if the property is called id or has id in its name so if i just had this property product id it would be already configured as a primary key and that means that the data annotation is not absolutely necessary but personally, I like to have it here just to make it more explicit 
but it's up to you if you want to have it there. We will also add the required annotation to the name property, which means that no records can exist without a name. And we will do the same for the price. And that helps us with the validation of the data. I'm also going to add an integer that will be the category ID for this product. In our database schema, we're going to have categories and products. And each category can have multiple products, but each product can have just one category. And we call that a one-to-many relationship. So this category ID property will identify which category this product belongs to. Of course, now we need to create the category class, which will be the model for this table. First, let's do our cleanup. And then this category will have an ID. And we can see here that this technology called IntelliCode suggests code that can potentially be in this model. And if we want to use this suggestion, we need to press the tab key. So I'm going to do that for the ID and the name. And I'm also going to create a list of products property. And this list will enable any framework to identify that this is a one-to-many relationship. And back in the product model, we're going to add a category object. And we will say that this category relates to this product using a foreign key, which is the category ID. And foreign keys are also a very important concept in relational data that helps us enforce the integrity of this data and consistency of records across tables. Back in the category model, we also need to make sure that the category ID is a key, but keep in mind that this key annotation is optional as we explained in the product model. And we also want the name to be required. And that's it. Based on these annotations, Entity Framework can create the database schema for us. So now we're going to open the NuGet Package Manager and create a new migration. And I'm going to call it Create Category. And before creating this database, let's delete our current database. And for that, we need to close the DB browser if it's open. And we also need to create this categories DB set in the products context. And that's the property against which we will execute operations using Entity Framework. Then let's examine the migration file. We can see that the indexes are being auto incremented. We can also see the primary key that was created and the categories table, which also has its primary key. Then we have the three indexes that have been created and the foreign key that assures the relationship between the products and the categories. And we can see here that by default, we have this on delete referential action cascade property. And that's a very important property for data integrity. It means that if a category is deleted, all of its products will be deleted as well. And that prevents us from having bad data in our database. With that, we can go back to the NuGet package manager and run the command update database. And we can open the products.db file again. And we can see that everything was created correctly with all the configurations that we added to our model. And that is the power of the entity framework code first approach. We can simply add the code that we want for any configuration and it will create a database with us with the intended database schema. And that's super powerful. It's one of the reasons why Entity Framework is so popular. Don't forget to check the links in the video description below for complimentary reading about the topics in this tutorial. And in the next chapter, we will create a method, we will create a method to add categories to the database.